another day, another PC teared out. Um, I've just lugged this thing up the stairs, so to be honest, I don't even know if I can be bothered to talk about it now. Again, I bought this partly because of the, the kind of case that it is. It's a big case. I wanted something big. Um, so I've got plenty of sort of expansion options. And I've been meaning to try and get some kind of file server up and running for us forever, basically. So this was sort of bought again some time ago to to try and spur that on. Uh, one of the other reasons I bought this is because it comes with a SATA or a SAS um, rack. So you've got sort of four uh, pluggable caddies for SATA or SAS hard drives, which is what I what I needed or what I want. Uh, I've actually got two of these systems. Um, I'll go into the whys for that later on probably. So just looking at the back of this, it's pretty standard really, it's just it's very wide, so a lot wider than a standard PC case. But otherwise it's fairly standard PC in terms of its layout. You've got your seven uh, expansion card slots, IO shield, although this is a bit of a weird one that screws in, I think that should come out hopefully a standard one will fit, I've not checked that but that might be something worth investigating. And this has got the dual uh, redundant power supply option fitted. One thing I've noticed with these um, Primogy systems is you can have different uh, power supply configurations in here and what they seem to do is fit different sort of metal framework which the power supply system then bolts into. So there are brackets available for a standard ATX uh, supply. Unfortunately these don't come with that, which is a shame because I, I don't really want the redundant power supply on this system, which you may think, well, why wouldn't you, why wouldn't you want to, to use it? But I don't particularly like these. They're very noisy and whiny at times. I don't really need the system to be like super high availability or anything. It's just for home use. So... Um, these will have to go, and then I'm going to have to try and find a way to fit a standard ATX supply in here, either make a bracket or buy one. I have seen the brackets, I think I've seen one on eBay, they're about £15, which is you know, a fair bit for a lump of metal, but then they're probably not that common to get hold of, so we'll see, I'll come up with something. I've got a nice large um, outlet fan on the back as well, I'm not sure what size that is. It looks pretty big. So it might be a 120 even. Unfortunately, with all the lights that I've installed in this room, with something this big, it's it's difficult to get the front lit. I've I installed an extra light up on this side, but it's uh, it's not doing the best of jobs. I could do with probably some kind of panel I can put on somewhere. So I've got a key, and that will release things. That releases the access to the side panel, and then these will then be removable. So you've got your drive bays, there's no three and a half, they're just five and a quarters. Uh, that fell off because I blasted it with the air compressor. And a variety of indicator things. This is actually like a little panel for these systems that's specific to the motherboard. Now I'm going to be probably going to be removing the board, well definitely because it uses the fairly specific connector to that power supply I think. So, so that panel will probably come out and then I'll have to come up with some other way of... Uh, getting a power button and things on here because all these LEDs will all be driven from the motherboard so as I'm going to just put something fairly standard in um, they won't be usable anyway and then we've got this here now when I bought this it it was being sold only with three caddies in even though it can take four so I bought an extra caddy um, I think these were being sold at about £20 each, but I managed, because I asked for an extra caddy with the case, or with the system, I got it for an extra £12. I don't particularly like the way these work, you have to sort of squeeze that green bit down and then it and then it will come out. But they're, they're nice caddies, they're cast aluminium, they're pretty sturdy. A nice recess for the hard drive bolts, fully shielded. Um, yeah, really nice and insulation there to protect the hard drive from shorting out. It's nice and dirty. So that's, uh, and that goes onto a back plane. Now this is one of the reasons I bought this case, because I've been looking at buying hard drive uh, sort of back 
planes with caddies and that and they're quite expensive even a, a basic SATA one you're looking at 50 to 70 pound uh, just for a four bay um, SATA one I think four or maybe three there's different ones available you get some that will fit um, a couple of your five and a quarter inch drive bays it might be three actually it will take but again they're quite expensive and I actually need something that's going to work with SAS drives as well because that's what I'm going to be using and that's not not quite the same as SATA so they don't always work so then that, that will release and slide off I just thought this is a size comparison this is a pretty standard size micro ATX case this is another one I did a tear down on so you can see it's quite a bit bigger and sort of width wise this thing's quite a bit wider it's a bit too big to fit in one frame so, <laughs> so we'll uh, have a look at the different bits as we go along so down here we've got the um, hard drive back plane and well, caddies and the back plane the back plane is actually the board along the back where everything connects into and then this is a SAS style connector this comes with a card but I don't know if this is a card I'll be able to use because I'm using I want to use ZFS I've already bought some cards that should allow me to use the drives and access the drives directly. Uh, a lot of the RAID cars tend to interfere with ZFS, so so they're not the best option, even though they're often cheaper. So uh, this will be staying in here. Uh, what I want to try and do is get the power supply out, um, which is up there, out of the way, and the motherboard and obviously the RAID card as well. A lot of this looks like it's a sort of quick release stuff. I'm not normally a fan of this stuff, but I'm coming to like it more. I think it's because a lot of the earlier cases that had this kind of quick release um, stuff built in weren't that great. So it would have been easier if I'd have taken the um, shroud off of that first, but you know, why make life easy? Uh, some kind of Fujitsu card. So I just thought I'd fire this up just to check it actually works and you can hear that's the power supply fans, sounds like a friggin hairdryer. So I definitely won't be using that. You've probably got some of them little delta fans in. I'm sure you could use them to fly uh, quadcopters with. So yeah this looks like it's the same spec as the other processor wise. Uh, i3-3220, well, this, this says it 3.3 GHz, so maybe that's the turbo speed because the other one said it was only 3 and 3 meg of cache 2 cores, 4 threads, so same as the other and we've got our 8, eight gig of RAM nothing exciting there yeah, it just needs persuading up let's connect the fan that's a big chunky fan there it could be a 120 mil. I don't know. And we've got a heat sink on the process. A bit of a. I wouldn't say it was a beast, but it's quite tall compared to your standard ones. I don't know if that would actually fit in an ordinary case, to be honest. So I think I've mentioned that I've actually got two of these systems. They're, they're identical, and I'm going to take the caddies out of the other one and mount them in here. I'm going to try and remove the the hard drive, well not the hard drive, so the five and a quarter inch bays. The little panel is probably going to get removed anyway, the control panel, because I think that needs to go with the board. As you can probably see down here, there's a whole bunch of fairly custom proprietary type connectors for that, so that really needs to be with the board if I'm going to try and get rid of the board. So I'll have to make some brackets to mount the second one of these in here somehow. Then the other case, obviously I'm not going to have any caddies available. I've, I think I've got some other ideas for that and I've, I've got some more parts. So that one's going to be a bit different. But this really, I just want to try and use this case to get this file server up and running that I want to build. As you see, the nice thing about this is there's plenty of space to work. It's, it's really quite nice for that. So it looks like this is using... Uh, just some Molex connectors onto the back of here. 
And this system seems to be another 12 volt output power supply system as well because you've got this similar similar to a previous teardown with the Dell T20 where on the board we've got this custom connector and then this little wiring loom that all the uh, drives get their power from so that needs to stay with that motherboard. There's a chassis intrusion switch here, not particularly fussed with that. And there's another button on the front, I think. Yeah, that's also chassis intrusion. So this this lower panel clips to the front and then that pushes the button in. So once this is removed, uh, which is obviously means that the hard drive bays have been accessed and that's also something that will act as a chassis intrusion switch. That might actually be a might be a potential there for that to be a surrogate power supply button temporarily. And then the power supply is um, appears to have some odd very um, proprietary connect connections with this system the power supply. So I'm going to leave these cables with the power supply I think. I think they're more specific to that than anything. If I can get them out. And it does look, uh, this power supply here, there are some spare headers so I would imagine they're for attaching additional power feeds maybe in a a multi-processor system so you can power that or additional bays or something. Of course another issue with keeping a, a heating like this is it's specifically designed to fit and work with this shroud so that this drags the airflow over it. So there's possibly no point in keeping it. So let's try and get this board out. So undo this panel connector while I remember. Looks like that's kind of attached. Okay. I thought it was stuck to the IO shield, but what it is, some of these posts have got um I don't know what you'd call it, maybe a chamfer would it be? A little bit that sticks up and locates in the hole on the PCB, so that's why they weren't, well it wasn't coming out very easily. There's the board, you've already seen it, nothing exciting. It's got a decent, well actually it's not that great, it's just a plastic one. Um, prefer the metal ones myself. I need to remove this IO shield as well. It's a slightly more unusual one that kind of these bits lock over the bottom and then you just screw it so it's actually almost solid. I mean that's a solid piece of steel. That. So as soon as I've still got this Dell board from this other system here I might as well use that to do a trial fit. It looks standard but it's a bit of a, a snug fit. There's clearly other posts on this, but then we've got these others here as well. And these rubber, I like these rubber bits because they support the board. Especially when you're putting force on, putting cards or RAM and things in. So yeah, that all looks good. So the case will take a standard IO shield and board. Let's try and take this power supply out now. I think I'm going to take the whole lot out of the bracket as well. So, well. I think I probably have to take the bracket out to get the rest of it out. To be fair, unless that is all one unit. I do wonder how much of the weight is actually the power supply and how much is the 
drive caddies and everything. Another screw down here. I'd be surprised if this is on the other side as well, but we'll find out in a minute. Nope, nope, that's it. Yeah, that's, that's got some heft to it, that has. That's a serious chunk of weight there. And these are very densely packed power supplies. So each of those is essentially a 450 watt supply. So, yeah, I'm going to have to come up with a way to mount an ATX supply to that. So again, this is that. This is out of the Dell system that I already took apart before. And it's the same sort of size as a standard ATX, which you can see that normally that wouldn't happen. So I need some kind of bracket to mount that there and try and create some kind of support as well but it shouldn't be too difficult. One thing that's interesting about these cases is that you can get them as rack mounts as well and you can see here there's this long bit at the bottom and I think this can un be unscrewed and that's where the rails would fit ordinarily but I think they make them as two separate versions of the tower and the uh, the rack mount because the tower version the, the top part can't be removed this this is one piece that wraps around but you can still see on the the inside of the chassis here you've got this um, this bit here where the rail would be mounted for the other side so I'd assume they wouldn't have this wrap around panel for that version so that's We can get this all out. Try and remove this front panel. I'm not sure what's going to be involved in that. And it's got this little, I quite like this as an idea. So all your system information is all available. Just a little pull out tab. Obviously that's going to be irrelevant now, but I do quite like this. Uh, these are like heavy duty blanking plates. I mean, that's like a whole rail mount system. Well, I think the idea actually is these rails are used to mount to, say, a CD drive. And if you're not using that, then you've got this metal front section, which just acts as a, a blanking plate. That, you know, it just goes to show why this thing is so heavy when you've got something as simple as that made out of a lump of lump of steel <laughs> seems a bit overkill but you know, it's server grade stuff so it's usually meant to be built fairly well even this thing uh, I don't know if I'll be able to detach that from there and keep the, the rail so I can put that back in I'm not sure I mean as I was saying I'm gonna try and remove this thing so it may be yeah as this locks into here that that's going to get removed anyway so debatable as to how much of this to actually keep so I might take this off of the rails I think I think that's perhaps the thing to do keep the rails with this and then this bit can go with the the board and I'll leave these switches on for now, whether they'll actually be used. So these are chassis intrusion switches. And what's this? Just part of the the locking mechanism. So it's not really a lot more to this. Obviously we've got a CD or DVD drive here, I'm not sure. DVD rewritable, nothing to get excited about. I've got a box full of the damn things, I can't get rid of them. In fact, it looks like it's, so the panel's got like a double skin. You've got the outer painted skin of steel and then this inner skin where everything's attached. So you're gonna have two full panels of steel. <laughs> this is just gonna to add to the weight, but it's, it's strong and it's, 
It's going to help keep any uh, noise inside the case as well. It's not going to reverberate like a, a drum, like a cheap case will. Although I think these uh, drives are mounted directly to these, these uh, caddies. So vibration from that's unfortunately going to go straight into the case as there's no dampening of them. That's, that's one of the things I didn't like about this. But again, this is just me trying to get something up and running for now. I can tweak things around at a later stage. So an option I've found with this fan shroud is you can actually remove the sort of ducting and shroud part. And this is probably again, a, there's probably different systems and they have different builds of shroud for different types of board. You can remove that so that it's out of the way for a more standard build. The only downside to this, and it is a big downside, if you ask me with a fan this powerful, is that that is then exposed and the blades are spinning in a way that you know it will chop you. <laughs> so not necessarily a good idea unless you can find some way to mount um, a grill over here to protect fingers or anything else that might get caught in it. I did try removing one of these. These are actually um, these corner bits like a rubberized uh, dampener. They're a real pain in the ass to get back in once you've got them out though. So I was wondering if it would be possible to screw something into there to attach a grill, but I'm not really sure. This latch on these cases is really annoying as well. You have to kind of drop the case lid into place where this sort of sits in the the lock mechanism and not push it, you can't push it all the way up, you're basically closing the latch pushes it shut. Really weird mechanism. So I'll just have a quick look at this server board. You've got your sort of VJ and serial port on the back so it's got some kind of onboard basic graphics. I think we've got two sets of USB ports, uh, four and then a console or terminal network thing of some sort. Again, I, I don't really, I've not really done a massive amount with server boards, so I don't know what it's all about. The, basically, one of the network ports would be like a management console connection, and maybe even the USB ports as well. It effectively, runs like a separate system on the motherboard, uh, as far as I understand. Um, you've just got your sort of basic uh, 16, 8x, and 4x PCI Express slots, PCI slot for compatibility I guess. Not really sure what that is, it's uh, UFM, don't know what that is. A couple of SATA ports on here. Uh, this is where the drive case connect. That does actually say SATA there, but they are definitely SAS caddies because I had a look and they've got the extra connections on them. The, the interface on the back of the slots for the drives is slightly different on SAS, so it's definitely right. But there's not really a lot on here. We've got the power in and out. I don't know. No. So yeah, that was for the peripherals. So there'll be some voltage conversion going on here to get the five volts. I'm forgetting this was the 12 volt power supply jobby. So, yeah, I'm gonna have a I'm going to take this off and have a sort of look at what kind of size it is with respect to a more standard case, whether it would fit. I'm actually, cooler master branded. Interesting. There we go. Oh, copper plate on it. I'm just going to grab the down. I've been messing around with. Uh, yeah, once you've got that mounted on, it might fit, it'd certainly be close. Um, I don't really want to take the heatsink off of that. Just a lot of pratting about just for the sake of testing something that might not actually even matter. Uh, I think it would fit. There wouldn't be much. Uh, spare space. Assuming you know, this is a sort of a standard width, although this might be a little wider than some cases. So that's that all pulled apart. I'll get the case back together and 
all these bits so I'll look at trying to get rid of them. Um, I'm going to keep the RAM off of this board because these are four, four gig sticks so they're still useful. So you've got a board like this one with four slots on it, you know, you're looking at 16 gig which is adequate for uh, just a desktop PC for general browsing and stuff and probably more than that but certainly good enough for that so I should keep hold of those I mean that's all right these days with the prices that's probably like 20 quid worth of RAM there so that's 20 quid I can take off what this has cost to buy and you know I've got that and usable RAM so yeah I'll leave it at that